If you're playing Cataclysm PvP for the first time, you might be in for a big surprise. Despite being over 10 years old, WoW's third expansion will test even the most experienced players, building on class design from Wrath of the Lich King by adding tons of new abilities and even completely redesigning others from the ground up. For some specs, the addition of these new spells will fundamentally change their playstyle, transforming them into something completely unfamiliar to the modern player. So today, we will be ranking every competitive spec from easy to hard so you know what to expect before the season starts. Even if you disagree with some of our opinions, your choice of main is guaranteed to have a direct impact on how easy or hard your time climbing the ladder will be. Just like how the choice to use skillcap.com slash wow can make your rating gains easy thanks to our 500 rating guarantee. That's right, we're so confident in our promise that you'll get a full refund if you don't see results within six months. How are we so confident, you might ask? Well, it's simply because we've spent the last few months working with the most hardcore players who have tens of thousands of hours playing Cataclysm to get you ahead of the competition the moment Season 9 starts. With guides that show you how to deal the highest damage, along with arena commentaries from literally the best layers in the world, you'll have everything you need to dominate even your hardest matchups. Best of all, one subscription gets you access to all of our games. So with nothing to lose and everything to gain, head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today with a special discount link in the description below. All right, back to the video. First things first, let's go over some criteria on what it means to be easy. Generally speaking, it means having a low skill floor, which is different than a skill cap or skill ceiling. So what's the difference? A spec having a low skill floor means it's easy to pick up. Even without technical mastery or nuanced game knowledge, you can still gain some rating. Skill ceiling is something completely different. Just because something is quote unquote easy doesn't mean it has a lot of depth or a high skill cap. So to organize our list, we need to think about how difficult it will be to pick up a spec for someone who has never played Cataclysm before. So let's dive in. We will start with our easiest melee in no particular order. Frost DK is without a doubt one of the most straightforward melee in the game, despite being one of the weakest. Its reputation as a two-button spec is hard to ignore, especially in these older expansions. And much like its modern design, Cataclysm Frost DK centers around its iconic Pillar of Frost and using Hunger and Cold as an AoE CC during one-minute setups. Beyond this, there really isn't much depth to the spec. While Kata does allow for more skill expression for the entire DK class with Dark Simulacrum, Frost DK maintains its identity as the easier spec compared to its unholy older brother. With virtually no pet management or snapshotting to worry about, Frost DK is mechanically straightforward. With our easiest melee sorted, let's move on to everyone in the medium difficulty category. First up is a spec you might not be expecting, Subtlety Rogue. Now before you freak out, we know that Rogue tends to have a high skill ceiling. It's the class that's generated more PvP videos and Twitch clips than everyone else combined. But remember, we're only caring about skill floors, which means how easy it is to pick up for someone who might never have played the expansion. Sub Rogue is one of the biggest winners from class design going from Wrath to Kata, giving it two different defensive power-ups. On one hand, Recuperate adds to the passive durability of the class, allowing it to have more freedom to stay in the fight and recover while kiting. On the other hand, rogues pick up an entirely new defensive to deal with other melee. Gone are the days of fearing warriors. Now rogues are the warriors, but with cheap shot, kidney, and a blind that now removes dots. Kata even includes a rework to vanish, allowing it to no longer break instantly on damage. Combine this with the fact that rogues have one of the most efficient burst cooldowns in the game prior to the scripted PvP meta, and it is no wonder that subtlety is widely considered one of the best melee in Cataclysm. So with multiple quality of life improvements, Sub Rogue levels up from the hard difficulty that plagued it in previous expansions. Arms Warrior suffers a massive fall from grace going into Cataclysm, being far less forgiving than it was in Wrath of the Lich King. If you're coming from Wrath, you're already familiar with Warrior being a finely tuned killing machine, but in Cataclysm, Warriors can actually die pretty easily and require significantly more defensive play. Keep in mind that using Recklessness prevents Warriors from pressing Shield Wall. You can't just blindly pop CDs or spin to win. Not only do warriors see the removal of the Iron Will passive, but Spell Reflection also gets a cooldown increase, leaving them more vulnerable to swaps, especially against rogues who have no problem bypassing plate armor now thanks to find weakness. And just like Rhett Paladins, Arms Warriors play almost as a pseudo support spec in Kata, but instead of off healing, they provide lots of healing options for their team. In order to do well as an Arms Warrior, you really need to support your teammates with the entire scope of your toolkit. Ping ponging around the map with intervene, eating traps, reflecting spells, and not just blindly pressing W. So despite its reputation as a vanilla melee spec, Arms Warrior will actually be one of the more challenging melee to play, especially later on in Cataclysm when casters truly reign supreme. 
All right, so we covered Frost DK, and you already know that Unholy is at least a tier more difficult. Unholy carries with it an almost identical win condition from Wrath, Summon Gargoyle. Just like before, the true learning curve of this ability is figuring out how to pump its damage using snapshotted buffs while making sure to keep players in line of sight to get blasted. This time around, Unholy DK has a bit more pet management, needing to pump its ghoul with a few death coils in order to transform it into something that resembles your average solo shuffle partner. On top of the newly added Dark Sim, Kata is also the expansion that gives DK's Necrotic Strike, which can add a bit more maintenance, especially to Unholy, who already has a lot going on. But anyway, Unholy DK is still pretty approachable for many players and will be incredibly strong throughout the expansion. Ret Paladin was one of the hardest specs to rank on this list, and despite being one of the last specs in our medium difficulty, it could actually be considered hard, but why? Ret Paladin plays an interesting role in Kata simply due to the fact that its off healing is so broken. The selfless healer talent adds two different flavors of complexity to the spec. For one, it means that Ret Paladins have a lot of tools to keep their team alive. Between big word of glory crits and a toolkit stuffed full of utility, there are a lot of expectations placed on Paladins. And because selfless healer only increases healing done to targets other than the Paladin themselves, it means that Rets are the target more often than not. So in order to excel as this spec, you need to be comfortable playing under pressure. Now, the biggest thing redeeming Ret Paladin of its difficulty is the fact that it is a bit more tanky compared to other melee. Ret Paladins stand out as a wall of defensive cooldowns in a time period where nobody knew what the hell a weak aura even meant. Between bubble, wall, and auto-procking shields, Ret Paladins have more than most other specs to actually stay alive, which helps ease newer players into PvP. Because of this, we're comfortable balancing out Ret Paladin on the medium tier, even though it could be considered a hard melee. Enhancement Shaman is our next melee in this category. Despite being a hybrid, the spec doesn't really lean into its full support role as much as some of the other specs in this list, but still needs to do a lot of off-healing in order to excel. Cataclysm includes a rework to Tremor Totem, making it less of a preemptive cooldown and turning into a one-minute reactive CD that can actually be used while feared, which cuts down on some of the responsibility of the spec. Rotationally, Shaman gets slightly more complicated compared to Wrath with the addition of Unleashed Elements, but still preserves its overall feel as the highly disruptive anti-caster melee. And with all the rogues running around, Shamanistic Rage is one of the most efficient CDs in the game, usable even while stunned. As we will discuss with Ellie later on, having a strong CD as a Shaman is really important when most teams want to just train the blue. As long as you can just be disruptive, mash your damage buttons, and throw in a few instant off heals, Enhancement Shaman isn't too difficult. But now we have to move on to the hard category with one melee who you might not expect. If there is one melee that can truly give Sub Rogue a run for its money, it has to be Feral Druid. But despite being the best melee in the game, Feral is quite challenging, but not for a reason you might expect. If you come from retail, or if you only played Wrath of the Lich King, you might have this idea in your head that Feral is squishy. But in Cataclysm, Feral is an unkillable brick wall of cooldowns and passive survivability, with a reworked survival instincts that literally gives them shield wall. Combine this with the ability to simply shift into bear and become an actual tank, and it's no surprise that Feral Druids are one of the most broken melee. Now, here's where we introduce the true learning curve of Feral. In order to pump the meters, you need to learn how to abuse snapshotting. The Feral rotation is a bit more complicated compared to other melee, and you will miss out on a ton of DPS if you aren't min-maxing. On top of this, you need to fully master your control kit. In Kata, Feral keeps one of the most broken talents of all time with predatory strikes. Just having the ability to instant cyclone every few seconds is a massively powerful advantage if you're using it effectively. You can't be lazy with your cyclones. So, despite being one of the best melee in the game, Feral can be a bit of a challenge if you aren't able to understand all of its intricacies. Now, you might be wondering about some of the specs we have left to cover. Asa and Combat Rogue will be joining Fury Warrior in the Please Do Not Play This category. By simply being considerably weaker than every other spec, you're really going to struggle picking up any of these for competitive PvP. Alright, with every melee sorted, let's move on to what might be the easiest caster in the game. Despite being a mid-tier caster, Balanced Druid is pretty simple in Cataclysm. Rotationally, it will feel remarkably similar to its modern design, with the majority of its damage coming from dots, instant star surges, all while having some plug-and-play offensives with Trance and Starfall. Players might be initially confused at the new Eclipse system in Kata, but don't worry, it's pretty much autopilot for the most part. As long as you can occasionally monitor a slow-moving pendulum, it's really not that hard to min-max damage. The one true difficulty curve of Balanced Druid and Kata is dealing with getting trained, because for the most part, you will be the kill target in most games, and outside of Bark Skin and Frenzied Regen, you might have to spend some time camping in bear form. Despite this, because of its relative ease in doing damage, Balanced Druid has one of the lowest skill floors in Kata. 
Just like melee, the overwhelming majority of ranged DPS will fall in the moderate category. First up is Mark's Hunter, which is a spec that is actually much better than most people remember. But before we get into it, there is something you need to know about monkeys. Back in the day, it was possible for hunters to reset the cooldown of their pet's spells, including Roar Sacrifice and the infamous Monkey Blind, which, yeah, was kind of obnoxious. Anyway, the way they did this was by dismissing and then resummoning a completely different monkey, which meant keeping a stable that resembled a scene in Planet of the Apes. Anyway, this tech doesn't seem to be working in Cataclassic, and as a result, hunters will be both harder and easier, solidifying them conveniently in the moderate difficulty tier. Instead of needing to constantly cycle pets in and out to roar of sack their entire team, hunters can focus more on doing what hunters do best, damage. In Kata, doing damage as a Mark's Hunter is even easier since now you don't have a stupid mana bar to worry about, and you can cast on the move. And thanks to your trusty monkey, it's even easier to land CC since you have a completely new way to keep healers in place. Now, the only downside of not being able to play Monkey Summon Simulator is the fact that it means hunters will probably be more squishy, so we think things even out. Anyway, with a mix of responsibilities and a fairly straightforward damage kit, we're confident in placing Mark's Hunter in the moderate tier. Next up is another hybrid DPS, Elemental Shaman, who takes a considerable nosedive from its dominant position in Wrath of the Lich King. Going into Kata, Ellie Shamans lose Astral Shift, which was one of the most overpowered passive defensives in the previous expansions. Because of this, Ellie will take considerably more damage throughout the expansion. The saving grace is that the Ellie rotation gets a few improvements in Cataclysm. With a Glyph, they are now able to use Lightning Bolt on the move, and their playstyle revolves around setting up Burst with Fulmination, giving them a periodic source of instant cast damage. Overall, the Ellie playstyle largely resembles what it was in Kata, acting as a highly disruptive caster who tries to set up small microbursts on enemy players, but this time being slightly less forgiving due to weakened passive defense. Our next ranged DPS in the moderate tier is Affliction Warlock. Don't get us wrong, Warlock is really good all throughout Cataclysm, especially later on with access to some really broken PvE gear. In many ways, Kata is the best expansion for dot classes, and unlike modern expansions, you're really rewarded for consistent dot management rather than trying to microburst with other gimmicky spells. Kata includes one giant quality of life improvement for Affliction, Soul Swap. This ability significantly reduces the burden of needing to manage dots across multiple players by making them swappable with a single button. In virtually every comp they play, Affliction Warlocks will pretty much do the same thing all game. Take dots from one target, swap them onto another, and try and haunt and drain life in between. There are a few learning curves for Affliction in Kata. For one thing, now that every healer has a magic to spell, it becomes super important to cover fears with unstable Affliction. In the modern era where add-ons dictate PvP, you can count on the average healer being quick to dispel your CC if it isn't covered. The other skill Warlock need to learn in Kata is Snapshotting. With the introduction of Demon's Soul, dot management becomes even more important, and min-maxing damage requires you to really pay attention to temporary buffs. Overall though, Affliction Warlock is a really accessible caster, with some of the best passive defense in the game coming from Soul Link and Demon Armor, and as the only class with an instant teleport to get to safety, it is a bit more forgiving compared to other classes. One of our last ranged specs in the moderate difficulty tier is Frost Mage. Now, if you've been a longtime subscriber of this channel, you might think that we always oversell the difficulty of Mage, and while that might be true, we're here to say that Kata Frost Mage is actually pretty straightforward. The expansion gifts the class its iconic Frostfire Orb ability, which loosely resembles the Frozen Orb we know today. Anyway, this single ability makes Frost Mages feel significantly smoother, as now they have another reliable way to generate those sweet procs to use on instant cast damage. Kata also gives Frost Mages a permanent water elemental pet. Well, almost permanent, since it can technically die, which means you might have to do a bit of pet management. Anyway, just like Frostfire Orb, their welly exists to feed them procs, leading to those iconic shatters that turn Mitch Jones from a boy into a man. Of course, mages will get bullied all expansion by Mark's Hunters, which is a fate they can never seem to escape. But despite this, the Frost Mage playstyle in Kata is one of a true wizard, and is very accessible to most players. Now, without a doubt, Fire Mage is one of the strongest specs in the game for the entirety of Kata, but its playstyle is a bit weird compared to the more modern versions of the spec. Fire Mages are actually a dot class in Kata, and need to spend most of the game fishing for hot streak procs. This is because their main wing condition is Combustion, which combines every fire dot on the target into its own Giga Chad fire dot. So in order to get the biggest bust, you need a big pyro crit, which means getting hot streak first. In order to fish for Hot Streak, Fire Mages need to shatter their Scorch of Fire Blast with either Frost Nova or Improved Cone of Cold. And then, once they get their Pyro proc, they need to find another way to make it shatter or simply pray to RNGesus for a crit. All of this means that Fire Mage can feel like a slot machine spec. 
When the stars align and you get lucky with crits, it's possible to absolutely melt the enemy team with a combustion, which can be spread across multiple targets. But if you're coming from retail and have no idea how to actually play fire, it's going to be a confusing time. So as a relatively backwards spec, we're actually putting fire in the medium difficulty. All right, wrapping up our ranged DPS, we have our remaining spec going into the hard tier. It's Shadow Priest, who has one of the most unique class designs in Kata. That's because priests have two unique ways of dealing damage. The familiar way is with dots. Shadow Word Pain, VT, Devouring Plague, you know the drill. But what makes Shadow feel truly unique is the cadence of its damage. Shadow Priest can spend time ramping dot damage while generating Shadow Orbs, which can then be used to grant a dot damage buff with Mind Blast, in which dots can be reapplied and snapshotted for even more damage. But Kata is also the expansion that gives Shadow Priest Mind Spike, which wipes all Shadow Dots off the target, but adds a crit modifier to Mind Blast and Dark Archangel, which can be used to do even more burst damage. This sort of creates a bit of risk and reward, where using Mind Spike as a finishing tool can be very tempting, but means removing a bunch of downstream damage if it fails. On top of this, Shadow Priest can have a lot of utility expectations in Kata. Between Mass Dispel, off healing and their new life grip, there's a lot you can and should be doing to help your team win. So because of its fairly unique playstyle and a bunch of defensive responsibilities, Shadow Priest will be going in the hard tier. That brings us to our full range difficulty list, including the leftover specs which we really wouldn't recommend for PvP. Now, while survival might be one of the best specs in PvE, it doesn't really translate well to PvP. Neither does Arcane Mage, who despite having a niche polymorph stun, pales in comparison to Fire and Frost. While all these specs might have some unique perks, they're just far weaker than other options. All right, time to round things out with healers, starting with the easiest of the bunch. Resto Shaman is not only the best healer, but it's also probably the easiest, due in part to how broken its healing actually is. Between Earth Shield, Healing Stream, Unleash Life, and Riptide, Shamans have multiple sources of passive and instant cast healing. And if that wasn't enough, their Dispel will even heal the target every time it removes a debuff. In a meta where Warlocks and Mages are everywhere, ready to CC and interrupt, Shamans have the luxury of having multiple strong instant cast options, all while having enough CC avoidance tools to harass those meta wizards. Shaman also has the luxury of being able to passively assist its teammates by buffing their damage. Now, this might not seem like a big deal, but Strength of Earth Totem gives around a third of the agility as the Vicious Gladiator's badge trinket, all while having zero cooldown. So who cares about casting a lightning bolt when you can place a totem and buff your OP melee? Now, of course, people might say that shamans can get trained, and while that's definitely true, so can every other healer. Disc Priests and Rest of Druids can get trained too, and their healing is weaker in comparison. So as the most AFK healer in the entire game, Resto Shaman is definitely the easiest. Everyone else will be moderately difficult or even harder, so let's see how things shape up. First up is Disc Priest, who sees a bunch of quality of life improvements from Wrath to Kata while also preserving most of its identity. Disc Priest is, without a doubt, the most offensive healer in Cataclysm, having the highest capacity for damage while also being the best healer in terms of offensive support. Unlike other healers, Disc Priest can dispel two magic debuffs at a time, which gives key advantage in making sure their team is able to stay aggressive. Learning how to abuse your dispel, especially in comps like RMP, is a key part of success for mastering this spec. Priests hold on to borrowed time going into Kata, which again is a key talent you need to learn in order to min-max healing and even damage. On top of this, Priests even get a few new cooldowns, including an Aura Mastery through Inner Focus and their iconic Power Word Barrier, which isn't necessarily the strongest defensive, but at least gives them a convenient way to deal with Smoke Bomb. And while Priests can suffer from being trained, their healing rotation is quite familiar and intuitive, and as long as you can master your role as offensive support, you should have no problem picking up this spec. Holy Paladin is our final healer on the moderate difficulty tier. Just like Disc Priest, Paladin maintains much of its identity from Wrath of the Lich King as the cooldown based healer. By a long shot, Paladins have the most cooldowns in the game, which is a big deal in Season 9 into those pesky melee cleaves which you can expect to queue into regularly. As we mentioned with Rhett, Cataclysm also gives Paladins their new Holy Power resource, which becomes a key part of their healing rotation, especially in combination with Last Word, which increases the crit chance of Word of Glory significantly when used on low HP targets. When this is combined with other cooldowns like Avenging Wrath or their new Guardian of the Ancient Kings, Holy Paladins can quickly top their teammates in a single instant global, which again is a really big deal in the early expansion where big bursty melee cleaves will be all over the ladder. The main difficulty Holy Paladins will encounter in Wrath are Wizards, who will become a huge problem in later seasons once they get their hands on the Legendary Staff and a few broken PvE trinkets. Outside of Hand of Sacrifice, it can be difficult for Paladins to avoid casted CC. But until then, Paladins will be one of the most accessible healers in the newest classic expansion. 
Now, if you've been keeping score, you already know that we have one healer left ready to be bullied in the hard category. Resto Druid is arguably at its weakest during Cataclysm. The once mighty trees that populated the ladder in TBC and Wrath get easily chopped down in Cata. Whether it's a sub rogue popping Shadow Dance or a DK Terminator walking across the arena, Resto Druids have a lot of natural enemies in PvP. The biggest problem for Druids during this expansion is the fact that their healing output gets shifted away from Life Bloom and is tied more into Rejuvenation, Swift Mend, and even Efflorescence, which is an awkward AoE heal designed for raids, but not so much for PvP. As a result, Resto Druids simply lack the sustained healing output to keep their partners and even themselves alive through damage. The only time druids feel like good healers are during tree form, which becomes a cooldown in Cataclysm that can actually be a bit awkward to use, because for whatever reason, if you shift out of it, you can't shift back in, making the entire cooldown useless. In order to truly excel as a resto druid in 3v3, you really need to play a high tier comp, finding yourself some skilled mages and shadow priests to help carry your healing weakness. And to further offset your healing, you really need to master Cyclone, recognizing the difference in when it should be used to slow the game down and when it should instead be used to go for a win. So if you're up for a challenge and want to be the tempo-based, snapshotting reliant healer, then Resto Druid might be for you. Now we've covered every single healer. Well, except for one. While you might have heard some rumors that Holy Priest works in 2v2, we really wouldn't recommend it for PvP. Overall, you're going to have a much better time playing Disc, blasting Ultra Numb as you death a CC. Before we go, you really don't want to miss this opportunity to get a massive head start on the competition with our 400 rating gain guarantee. Our courses and arena commentaries have everything you need to help you reach your goals. Regardless of how easy or hard your class is to play, we've got you covered. So head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today to start your journey to Gladiator. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.